What's going on everybody out there and welcome back to another episode of the Dark Avenger comic book review coming at you like we always do each and every week as we move towards our 500th Dark Avenger comic book review and then of course we'll be moving the show over to Comic Frontline and it will no longer be on a weekly format. That will be the last time I mention it until we get closer. I just feel like I, want to, I wanted to mention it. For some reason it rolled off the tongue so I'm going to let it roll off the tongue and as we always do before we do every single week's review we do a little bit of a pre-show and hopefully everybody had a wonderful thanksgiving mm -hmm. uh, i believe we did our review around that, around that time yeah last week, i think it so. was the, the day before thanksgiving it was the day before thanksgiving right. we did it on wednesday and then there was thanksgiving hopefully everybody enjoyed thanksgiving we are now in the christmas spirit yep as you can see as with the lights you can see we have lights and for those of you that have watched my channel and saw the review station the review station's all christmas out we actually should grab some Pokemon cards and do something with Pokemon for Christmas. Maybe we will. It all depends. Really, it depends on money for Christmas. It's been a tight year. Well, you know, the, the, there, there is that. It's a always. tight year this yeah. year. We'll have to see. Maybe we'll do something in January instead. Depends on, again, all depends on what we're doing. Or then, you could get for my birthday in January. I mean, you know, that would be a good gift. We could see. I don't know. So, really not much else pre-show-wise. We are recording this as it is the last week of November. Mike will talk about... The books that did not come out the last week in November, that is for next week's review. Um, but, um, yeah, we're heading into December. Hopefully everybody's getting ready for Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas. I believe Hanukkah is in the first week of December this year. It is, actually. It's uh, this weekend. December actually. 1st. So we're the starting second, the month off. Because the first is Saturday. Oh, it's starting on Sunday? Yeah, it's starting Sunday. Okay. Yeah, they, wow. they, they switched it up a little bit also. And then that coming week... Smash Bros. Ultimate. I am looking forward to hype. Everyone. And, oh, uh, the we, hype. We triple made sure we were going to get this game. We actually... No, uh, we quadrupled, sure. Yes. We I was quadrupled, it. sure. We pre-ordered it a year ago. Once it was announced last year. No, 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 no. It was actually like uh, in the middle of March, April, was it? Was it at the beginning of this year? Maybe. It, Whenever it, it went on pre-order, we pre-ordered it. And then we also put money into it. So this way, we... Amazon didn't wait to charge us. We already paid it full price. So once it's released, it comes so it directly to us. So there shouldn't be any problems coming So there here. should be no problems with okay. it coming here. I hope now, not. Now we've been having trouble with mail the last two days. So I just hope whatever's going on with the mail situation will fix up. I don't know. I've, I've expected packages today and Well, I hope it comes came. fly because on my Durock 18 side, it's going to be the ultimate unboxing. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, we'll We're going to put show everything. Maybe I can make a rock unboxing also because I haven't done rock know. unboxing in a while. But yes, yeah, so Smash it out. Uh, what else? There was Dark Siders this week. I did an unboxing on my channel. You guys can go check that out. Um, as far as other things for my channel, I think that's going to probably be it for this week. Like I said, the holidays are super busy. And as it's a new channel and, and it's building up steam, I'm slowly debating on what I'm going to be doing first on the channel and testing out first. So uh, if you haven't already uh, subscribed to my channel, I am thinking about a URL, but we have to hit that 100 subscriber mark. We are 51 subs, so we are 49 away from making that 100 subscriber goal so I can fix the URL. And when we get to the URL, I will figure out something that's catchy. Obviously, the channel is my name, but I would like to make the URL something that rolls off the tongue, pertaining, of course, to my name. So we'll see. Yes. And let's not forget on our Brooklyn Boys 13 channel, December, you know what that means, right? Yes, we will be doing... If you want to do that, go ahead. You can announce that, and then we'll get into the review. Well, is it going to be 12 or 25? 25. All right, so we are going to be doing... I mean, do you want to do 12 or do you want to do 25? We never I really mean, debated it. Well, we could try 25 if we could. Well, basically, the point is... It's going to be... Gonna, yeah, don't say how many days it is yet. Just say... It's going to be the 25 it. days of fill in the blank. No, I said what it is. Smash Miss. Uh, no. A uh, Switch Miss. Switch, switch Miss. miss. See, you got Super Smash Brothers on my brain. Switch yeah, Switch Miss, yeah. So we'll be trying to do... I mean, I don't know. Maybe... I don't know. We got to think about that. Because it's going to be this Saturday. If you see something this Saturday, we're doing the 25 days. If you don't, then we're doing the 12 days. So what right. we're going to be doing for 12 or 25 days is we are going to be playing a video. We're going to be doing a video on a game for the Switch. Only Switch. Right. And uh, it could be the same game on different days. We're not going to do like the same game two days in a row unless we part one, part two it. Uh, but we will be doing a Switch game a day. 
Yeah, it's going to be a Nintendo something for me, I'll tell you. Yes, and of course with Super Smash Brothers out, maybe that will be something that will be multiple days if we do the... Um, well, didn't we want to wait till Christmas? I don't know. The yeah. Light? The One of Light? I forget what it's called. The World uh, of Light. World of Light? I think that would be something to, to play. Well, we could. Maybe the day of, if we could. We'll see. I don't know. Again, we're, we're still figuring it out. So it's either going to be the 25 or 12 days of um, Switch Miss... Might be 12 if we want to do the Super Smash Brothers. We might substitute 25 for 12 so Michael can do the World of Life oh, and I have Super to Smash the Brothers. Characters. Right, so uh -huh. we might do 12 days thinking, Maybe we should thinking do 12. of that. So more than likely it's 12. All right, well, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Right. But So let's get into this week's yes. review now. So we have 14 books that came out this week, an even number, guys. And all these 14 digital books, except the one you said? Or did you... Did you say there were all books? No, all books this week. You said something about that there wasn't a book this week. That was... No, that was this one. And that <gasps> oh, okay. Count. Well, all 14 books all came out on the week of November 21st, 2018. Right, and, before Thanksgiving. And we're going to start with the indies first with your book. Middle West, issue number one, was recommended to me by Mike Spider Slayer, and I'm very happy I read it. By I Scotty really Young, liked too. It. It's by Scotty Young, and... I truly enjoyed this first issue. It's this boy who, I don't know if, he, if it's in his mind or if he's in this magical town where he's having a nightmare. He wakes up. He's late for his paper route. His dad is a very abusive father. It's a um, little sketchy. Very kinda. angry father. No, I, I thought the artwork fit. And, um, you know, he ends up saying, screw my paper route. Goes off with his friends. His friends try to steal from a store. <laughs> they get caught. Yeah, the Punisher shirt. Yeah. That, that's funny. They end up getting caught. The father brings him home and says, you know what? You ain't coming in. You're done. Whatever. And he's like, F you to the dad. The dad hits him and he says, does that make you feel big? And that's where the dad, see, in the beginning, he's having a nightmare about running away from a tornado. And his father apparently becomes the tornado. And the boy oh, ends up wow. running right now. The reason why... Um, I said this could be exaggerated. Is because all throughout the book he's talking with a fox as well. So we don't know if he is projecting to us, the readers, what he's seeing. And it's not really happening that way. Or if um, this is legit. But in the next issue he meets a wizard. So it very much could be what's happening. Uh, I think we compared this to the Wizard of Oz kind of deal where, you know, it could have happened, but it could have not happened. Same deal here. Either way, as a reader, we choose to believe that it did happen because that's what we read and that's what's set in stone on the book. So very interesting. And I will definitely be back for issue number two. A dollar book, actually. No joke. One dollar. Atomic Robo. Greatest Hits. Issue number one. And the reason why it's an, a dollar because... Out of reading all the Atomic Robo comics in all my life, first of all, there were two stories, two weird stories. And the first thing talked about, you know, a courtroom where was this dinosaur that does all this, and then the robot uh, faces him, and then there's just like a whole big here and there thing, so that was kind of weird. And then lo and behold, in the second story, there's about this kid who gets a uh, video about uh, some, I don't know if it's Bigfoot or, or whatever creature it was for that. And uh, the artwork was good, I will say that much. But the stories were so weird, and I, I, I was ter I put it down after one. I'm like, okay, great art, but what the hell was I reading? So, like I said on Frontline Line, it was on my least um, pile thing. My tablet's acting up again. But um, for a dollar book, I guess you can get that. Exorcisters, issue number two. We get the backstory on the Exorcisters and how she ended up separating into two, where it's her and her soul self. And it's all because of the mom, because the mom, who was jobless, uh, went to take a job and basically signed a contract with these people. It turns out they were demons. Oh, yeah, I remember so that girl, yeah. Because they got found out and she was fired as kind of a payment so that she could keep her soul, they stole... Her daughter's soul, and then her daughter, years later, went to get it back. But because the soul was so different, they couldn't be remerged together. So now they work as exorcists. That's a long story short. Oh, and the mother's being chased after since the daughter got her soul back. Um, 
for the breach of contract, and the mother wants protection. For she says reason. the daughters say no, and they give her a card and say, if you end up in hell, just rip it in half, we'll find you. And the mother ends up taking a, um offer from someone else instead. Yeah, that rock chick reminds me of Mike Talica for some reason. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, and it got... Yeah. I loved it. I thought this was a good setup issue. Michael? I yeah. think your book is next. It is next. I'm sorry, this, this tablet... The artwork is... in the book is really good as well. I will mention that. Sorry, I'm just fixing something on my computer. Yeah, I think I should ask Santa for a new tablet. Because this one's like all over the place. Alright, uh... Well, when you're done typing, I will show my next book because okay. I need that. Shadow Man issue number nine. This one is actually really interesting. This talks about why do I forget his name? Because every time I'm like saying, I'm going to remember his name. Jack Boniface. How could I forget that name? Yeah, Boniface. Well, I mean, that... that well, anyway, blessing. in this sense, uh, this is just him battling against his own LOA. Like, he doesn't want to be... Shaman anymore and he wants to get rid of it so uh he goes up and also sandra derrick if you say her name and i remember her character she actually makes an appearance in this book which was really interesting i i love the artwork the artwork is really drawn really nice and uh elisa actually gets possessed by somebody else in the mirror and mm. she's not herself actually she's this other person so um yeah that's gonna be really interesting and now he, uh, the Shadow Man is actually, uh, thinking that Sanjaya, however you say her name, is behind all this, or knows something that he doesn't. So we'll find out in the next issue to see what happens there. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Urban Legends, issue number seven. The little girl gets kidnapped. By who? We don't know. Because, uh, Mikey was supposed to watch them, and they get kidnapped by somebody, so... When Raphael uh, hears about this, he actually wants to uh, help out the team, you know, and to find out where she is. Casey Jones took a weird turn, just like his dad, like, getting, like, all, uh, like, uh, mean and stuff like that. I'm like, I understand that, you know, he lost his daughter and it's a dark. This is a dark universe. But this is a dark turn for Casey Jones, like, being like his father was, you know, like, all this and that. But it's not really April's child it was Gabrielle who died and I remember reading this in issues before that so Raphael pays a visit to the uh, Foot Clan to see if they know anything about it they send them on a mission to attack this guy uh, Antoine Big Tony Puzzarelli something like that and a weird turn of events is that before killing the guy he Raphael actually saw the little girl in the apartment so I was like wow to think that the, if the little girl would have saw what he would have done. And he knows uh, him because uh, she said Ralphie. So I'm like, oh boy, that made things. Whole and I know you probably know what happens next. So I'll find out when I get to it. So now we're heading to the big two books. As we jump into Marvel first, Spider-Force issue number two. We get introduced to Jay, uh, John Jameson, who is the Spider-Man in the universe where... I forget what the sister's name was. Well, I believe I believe it's right here. Um, da, 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 some kind of the auto becomes yada yada. I forget Actually who. born in... No, yeah, I'm looking for the celestial... Oh, she... The daughter basically goes looking for the essence of her father in this universe. And at first, uh, John Jameson doesn't trust them. Then he kind of does. And then it... it, it it was it, it not as strong as the last issue. We get a little bit more insight on Charlie Parker, basically Peter Parker, and we find out that the uncle, that his uncle Ben never died. He was very different. Yet this uh, Peter still ended up becoming a spider uh, person, which was very cool. And um, on his part, and then every, all things get kind of blown to hell by the end of the issue. Now. That's all good and nice and whatever. And then you see that um, John Jameson, uh, Space Spider, or Spider-Man, Space, Space Spider-Man, whatever, uh, is holding what she's looking at. However, then you get to Spider-Geddon issue number four, which somebody didn't check with somebody else because Spider-Geddon issue number four begins with Jessica coming out of the universe with the crystal. And the crystal being so everything got all mixed up. So basically, we know how issue number th we know how the miniseries is going to end now because this book 
tells us that somehow Jessica at least is going to get through and is going to be abducted by the brothers and sister and and get they're going to get the crystal and resurrect their father, which they do. Uh, Norman Osborn and the Spiders Man end up destroying the web of life and trapping the uh, Celestials in the 616. Um, I like how they're referring to it as 616 universe again. Doc Ock makes a play uh, using Ben as a offering. He gives Ben to the Celestials in order to um, basically let them leave the 616, you know, leave that world peacefully and they're welcome to go wherever else they want and they won't be um, stopped. And obviously, I think this is all a ploy. It's a lot of talking. I, there were a lot of really good scenes in this book, though. I did enjoy it. I just... Somebody dropped the ball on Spider-Force. Somebody dropped the ball on the Spider-Force conclusion. So now we know how Spider-Force is, at least for Je on Jessica's end, going to end. So... The Punisher issue number four. Oh, real quick, in Spider Geddon also, I did like Miles and um, and Doc Ock's chemistry there a little bit. I did enjoy that a little bit. All right. So uh, in the Punisher, uh, we saw that uh, Jigsaw returned uh, with uh, tagging along with Frank Castle, but of course, as I knew that there was going to be a little bit of a fight scene with each other, which there was. And uh, I like how when they say uh, we ain't done, you know, not by long shot, because you know that they're going to return sooner or later. And this was all related to um, Hydra, so to say, because uh, as uh, Frank Castle was going after uh, the Hydra agents along with Zemo, I think that's what that uh, person's name was, uh, he's actually going to face off against uh, Mandarin in the next issue, because that's where it ends off with, just Punisher going up against Mandarin and... That's going to be a really interesting uh, fight that we're going to see between those two. So, that's really all that happened in the book. Alright, we're moving into DC Comics now. And I'm starting off with Injustice 2, annual number 2, because this is DC Digital. Even though it comes out physically, there's no digital first. It all comes out physically and digitally at the same time. The annual all comes out in one shot. And I like that they went back in time and showed a moment where Superman and Batman, this is before Injustice 1, and it shows their friendship, it shows their working together, and then you see, as the book continues, we go back to present day, and Bruce is with the Kents, or with Jonathan Kent, and he realizes, you know, he judged Superman for killing Joker, but he was never there as a friend because Joker is the reason why Lois died first, and and Clark was suffering so he goes to Clark and kind of apologizes for not being that friend and there was it was a very strong um I don't want to give too much away because you should read it but it was a very strong first um part where they showed the past and then you get into the present and it kind of makes you it gives you the feels with Martha and Clark and then Bruce and Clark you know Jonathan doesn't go see Clark at all and this all takes place right before Injustice to the game and now Injustice 2, I believe, it says the end, but I believe then Injustice 2 happens. I'm behind on Injustice 2 um, this season, but I believe after this season, which I believe this is actually the end, um, that's it. They're done doing the Injustice line unless we get an Injustice, Gods Among Us, number three, which I don't know how they would do it yet, but right now we know, if you played the video but game, you know you what But didn't you say that Superman. Superman goes into... The Phantom Zone. Phantom Zone. Spoiler... If you played Injustice 2, by the end, you get a choice. You could be on Batman's side or Wasn't Superman's side. Wasn't Injustice 1 when he got stuck in the fam zone in the end? No, he ended up in that prison at the end of the first game. In the second game, they if you chose Batman's side, which is the good side... Oh, then it's they the put other Superman way. Into, okay. Superman is sent, is exiled to the Phantom Zone. Supergirl stays on Earth and, you and know, then that builds happened. back up the credibility of the Superman... Of the, the L, the House of L's S... And if you chose Superman's side, everybody goes under the control of Brainiac, including uh, Supergirl. So obviously that's not what happens, so... We'll, we'll see that. Just League Dark, issue number five. This is a brand new story arc. And what I liked about this story is that we uh, got the return of Fam Stranger, which I haven't seen since the New 52. But it was more about narration, about the chimpanzee, you know, just... Drinking and finding out, you know, where their uh, mission lies next and stuff like that. And uh, 
whatever they do is like really a bad idea. We also see John Constantine who fights off against uh, Dr. Fate with his magic. And that was really intense along with the artwork, I must say. And it was really a huge fight there. And then uh, in the end, we get uh, the blue demon who comes in. and uh, Or the blue devil, from what it says. And uh, I like that in every uh, little narration. It just says, and the chimpanzee drinks. Or Detective Chimp, from what you tell me his name is. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, it's a little bit different than what we saw in the witching hour. And the witching hour was... Oh, I'm, I'm not going to talk about that, but... All in all, this was a brand new story arc and something good. Batman 59. Now, again, this is something that's going to be going on for a while. We're about to hit issue 60, which means there's 40 issues more to go for Tom King's run with um, with Batman and his endgame, so to speak, with issue 100. So, Penguin divulges the side that Bane is not really what he's claiming. He's all, he's fine. He's running Arkham and he's looking to destroy Batman and Batman doesn't trust Penguin at first. Then he kind of does. And obviously he does because he goes into Arkham, finds Bane and just beats the living crap out of him. And then Inspector Gordon comes in. He's like, dude, what are you doing? I've been watching him. He's, he's a vegetable. He's, he's broken. You know, why are you beating him up? And he doesn't believe him. And then Batman actually socks. Inspector Gordon, Commissioner Commissioner Gordon. Gordon. And, I'm sorry, why did I say Inspector? Commissioner Gordon, and that's where Gordon finally snaps and says, you know what, I've had enough. This is enough. And, um, you know, I feel like this happens a lot with Batman where he does something, Gotham's like, it's enough. They take down the bat signal. They, 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 they basically abandon Batman, and he becomes like a kind of vigilante against the police and the supervillains, and then all of a sudden comes back. Now, obviously, this is all part of Bane's plan because you see it in his face at the end when he's smiling, but um, now Batman has lost his friend with, in, with Commissioner Gordon. He lost his connection with the GCPD. And more of Batman's life is breaking apart. He lost Catwoman. He lost Nightwing. Now, now he's lost um, Commissioner Gordon's friendship. What else is next before finally the bat, as they say, breaks? We'll see. Teen Titans, issue number 24. It's the 24th issue, so I guess two years of uh, Teen Titans. Unless it doubled up for a while. Unless it, yeah, unless it doubled up for a while. And in this one, I could just like sum this up in a couple of sentences, basically. They're stuck under the rubble from what we saw from the explosion. And uh, I like how they're trying to get out of it. Like how, uh, I forgot what her name was. Like uh, she just tries to hold up uh, the fort and everything. And they're trying to look for Dijin, which they actually found Dijin. And then uh, Flash is trying to get that wood out of his uh, leg. And I thought that was funny. But we had Red Arrow that did it in a painful but funny way. And uh, here's the thing that got me in the end, though. In the end, we see Red Arrow who actually talks uh, with Dijin. Or, or is it Jin? Did he say D is Dijin. 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 Yeah. And uh, how uh, Red Arrow's trying to find out more about her. And... There's another side of Dijin that you don't want to mess with, is all I am going to say. So, we found out a new level of her in Teen Titans. So, how's this going to play out as future issue goes? I don't know, but wow. Just just wow. I, knew, I mean, I knew she was genie, but the thing she did, just wow. Now, this connects with another issue, and they, these are the last two of the review. Aquaman issue 42, which I thought was done great. The artwork was great. Um, as we saw in the last issue of Justice League, uh, Aquaman gets uh, stabbed by Tri um, oh God. The Trident. By, yeah, I forget his name, though. Um, oh, my Poseidon. God. Poseidon's Trident. And we think that Poseidon's trying to kill Aquaman, but in reality, Aquaman ends up going on a, a journey within himself. And his father's there. And it's such a deep and strong story where there's a destination that Arthur has to get to. And he becomes, you know, he grows up because he starts off as a child and then he grows up. And his father's leading him or, or he's there as backup. But really, Arthur's making this journey on, him, on his own. And we find out that that journey is to hope. And he gets re-empowered thanks to um, Poseidon. And, you know, what beats Doom is love. And he sees that, you know, Mira and everyone else who's there to support him are his greatest I strengths. I like this line. Yeah. And then um, 
there's a, the heartfelt moment with the father as he comes back to reality, and then you see him punch beside him, which then leads into which Michael was looking through the book. I'm sorry, um, I was just looking. Which to then see... leads into Justice League issue. <sighs> sorry, I'm trying. Oh, Justice whatever, League real. issue number twelve, and that's where this broke apart. That was such a great issue of Aquaman leading into Justice League where the art was inconsistent, the word bubbles or the dialogue was more than plentiful. It was downright describing everything we were reading. It's like, I, I believe I compared it to a novel where the writer of the novel is ex explaining and basically telling you everything going on in a My scene God, where, the dialogue bubbles take over where, where you don't even have a chance to let your imagination make the scene the writer's doing it for you except here you have pictures already and you have everybody in detail deeply talking about everything so aquaman's back poseidon is trapped there he gives aquaman his trident uh mira defeats um or hurts one of the gods and is able to stop the world from flooding. Batman's attacked by the Legion of Doom, who ends up taking the um, the the oh god, I had it, I had it twice, and then it's gone. Not the singularity, it was the um, whatever it was, the thing that they found from the first arc. They end up escaping. Um, Aquaman and Wonder Woman are coming back to Earth. Flash is cured. Superman's still wearing an eye patch for some reason. The artwork, like I said, inconsistent. At certain parts, the artwork goes. In a completely different direction and it does not fit at all it's kind of horrible and i know that this week the um aquaman justice excuse me the aquaman justice league drowned earth drops so it's the final part to drowned earth or road to drowned earth or whatever and i'm really hoping really hoping that the art is not the same art that was in um, Justice League, the bad side. The regular side was fine. Yes, in time but, we'll find oh, out. Oh man, it, if I didn't, if I didn't um, already set our order for February, I would honestly be on the fence about moving Justice League to a digital you read. You got to do your research. I'm probably, I'm probably gonna move Justice League to a digital read because it's just too much. It really is too much. Now I understand why Brant and a few other people said they were gonna walk away from Drowned Earth and come back to we, Justice we League. We need to maybe. make a or petition. Aquaman maybe we later. need to make a petition to have a nearest no. comic store. Yes. Oh, yeah, so we can go to a comic store. That'd be nice. Not a petition. We, we need to. to make a request, but no. Um, so Justice League kind of ruined Drowned Earth, whereas Aquaman made me very interested in Aquaman, and I might pop in for the first issue to see if I like where the new direction is going uh, with the new team coming on for Aquaman after Drowned Earth. We'll see. But uh, Aquaman, very strong. Justice League, very dialogue heavy, and it kind of takes you out. So from my, I believe, second place, in my top five, all the way to my least favorite book of the week. That's bad when it's your least favorite. Uh, although GoBots issue one was my absolute worst because I didn't even get through the book. So if you want to go by worst, worst, GoBots. Right after that would be Justice League just because too much dialogue. Scott, Snyder, please relax. We are not complete idiots. We understand what's going on. You don't have to explain everything step by step. Uh, detail by detail, you know, making sure that there's no plot hole anywhere. Please relax on the dialogue just a little bit. If it takes me the amount of time to read Justice League, the same amount of time as it takes me to read three other comics, that's bad. <laughs> I leave this book, yeah. and I think Mike Spider said I mentioned, I leave this book as my last book to read every week it comes out because I know it's going to take me the longest, and if I don't read it, oh well, it won't be in my top. And that's why it probably will end up going to a digital uh, pile. Because uh, even though Drowned Earth is ending, it's still part of the same arc, so to speak. Unless this is like a 12-part arc that's set up. I might go to issue 12, go a full year and see, or 24 if that's a full year, and see if that's the end game. I'll keep an eye on the solicits. If not, I'm going to a digital format because I, I, I can't. I can't deal with so much dialogue, especially when I read so many books already. I had to put books on the side because I, I wanted to get this book read. And that's not how a comic should be. It should be enjoyable. It shouldn't be something that you're dreading to read as, as the last book in your pile. And unfortunately, that's what Scott Snyder is doing with Just League. So much dialogue that it's like, oh, God, okay, here we go. And it's just like three hours later, you're done. Not really, but, you know, I'm, I'm exaggerating. But, you know, a long while later and you're done. And it's... Mm. 
So with that, that's it for this review, everybody. So as always, now it's your turn. Let us know what you thought about the books that came out this week. Like, dislike, agree, disagree, recommendations. We'd love to hear from you. And until next time, we'll see you guys next week for another episode of the Dark Avenger Review. Yep. Take care, keep reading, keep collecting. We'll see you all in the next one. Later, everybody.